Hey guys, this is Mick from Core Conservation and uh, this is another video from the lab. To be able to accurately answer some of the most common questions about damp walls, we did a fairly simple experiment to test how damp brick masonry behaves when it is lime plastered, cement plastered or left exposed. The purpose of this experiment was to test water migration from the soil into the brickwork which is basically rising damp, and to test lime and cement plaster versus an exposed masonry, and uh, how they prevent or contribute to moisture or salt accumulation in the brickwork. I can tell you in advance that we had some very interesting results. In this video, we will be concentrating on and comparing how lime plaster performs versus a cement plastered masonry. In another video, we will be comparing how lime plaster performs compared to an exposed masonry as well. So let's talk about how we have set up this experiment. We have built our test walls directly on the soil, replicating an old internal wall where the only source of moisture is damp rising from the ground. These walls were otherwise completely protected from the elements or other sources of moisture. Also, it was a non-heated environment without temperature differences, which is a non-condensing environment. We have used new traditional porous red bricks, which are very similar to those used two or three hundred years ago. And for the mortar, we simply used brick dust to make the building fabric as uniform as possible. One wall was plastered using a very traditional lime plaster. The other one was plastered using sand and cement. And the third one was left exposed, but we are comparing it to lime plaster in another video. In this video, we will be summarizing what exactly happened and we will be comparing the outcome of the lime plastered masonry with the cement plastered one. Initially, we have placed a piece of damp proof membrane under the walls to make sure no rising damp can come up while the plasters do fully dry or carbonate. After the plastering, we have let the walls dry out completely, which took about three months as was confirmed by our embedded moisture sensors. These sensors are those spikes with the boxes and the antenna on top. As the next step, we lifted the test walls and pulled out the damp proof membrane, allowing our test walls to absorb moisture from the soil. For lifting them, we have used those metal frames, as you can see under the walls, which were disassembled and removed when the experiment began. Then we simply left the walls sitting on the ground for two months. Within a few weeks of the start of the experiment, we could observe that the bottom section of the walls are already getting darker. Our embedded sensors also showed that damp appeared inside the bricks from a quote-unquote dry-looking soil. By the end of the two months test period, our test walls were ready for a detailed analysis. We did gravimetric drilled core measurements to determine exactly how damp these walls have become. We took samples from various heights, from the external plaster, the bricks and the mortar. Drilled core or gravimetric measurements are the golden standard in the conservation world as it gives the most consistent and most accurate results about the moisture content of the sample, as described in the English Heritage publication. We have also disassembled the walls, looking closely into the walls, looking for any visual changes and measuring the inside of the walls. We have carried out salt measurements to see if any salt contamination has occurred during the two months, as described in the English Heritage publication. And these are the results. We had a reference brick from the same batch, which we kept in the same place, but not in touch with the only source of moisture, which is the soil. 
This brick gave us the dry values in this environment, to which we could compare the readings of our test walls. The reference brick contained 0.12% moisture. Gravimetric measurements, or drilled core sample measurements, showed that both of our walls have become considerably damp. 10, 11 and 12% of moisture in the lime plastered wall and 14, 15, 16% in the cement plastered wall. The lime plastered wall showed a decrease of values as we have measured higher and higher, which means that the higher we go, the more moisture evaporates. The non breathable cement plastered wall has accumulated more moisture than the lime plastered one, and interestingly enough, the dampest spot turned out to be at the top. The fact that it is not getting less as we go higher and higher can be explained by the following equation. If moisture in is greater than moisture out, it will result in moisture accumulation inside the masonry. So we can conclude that moisture behind the non-breathable plaster has the tendency of migrating towards a surface where it can evaporate. When more moisture is moving to the evaporating surface than what can actually evaporate, moisture will accumulate behind the non-breathable plaster. Inside the lime plastered wall, we can observe the opposite. More moisture can evaporate through the breathable lime plaster than the amount of damp entering the wall at the bottom. Subsequently, the wall is getting less and less damp as we go higher, which is the opposite of moisture accumulation. We have disassembled the walls and found a lot of liquid water behind the cement, which shows clearly the degree of moisture accumulation. We have carried out salt measurements and this is what we found. Our test walls were built using brand new bricks with no initial salt contamination. After our two months test period, we have tested the walls for sulfates, nitrates and chlorates using chemical test stripes. In the lime plastered wall, we got a very light purple discoloration on the nitrate test and nothing on the others. So a light nitrate contamination is measurable inside the lime plastered wall. These nitrates came up in a dissolved form from the ground and deposited in the masonry. In the cement plastered wall, beyond the nitrates, we could measure sulfates as well. The source of this sulfate contamination is the cement plaster itself, as shown by the full discoloration of the sulfate test of the cement plaster. Most cement products have a high sulfate content because gypsum, which is calcium sulfate, is added during manufacturing to slow down the setting process. Sulfates will dissolve in a damp environment and migrate from the cement plaster into the masonry, potentially contributing to an early decay of the masonry. That is the point when they cause bricks to crumble and delaminate, which signals the end of the life of the building fabric. Let's summarize our conclusions. A lot of moisture has come up, much more than expected. The dry reference brick was 0.12%. Compared to that, both walls have become very damp, 10 to 12 and 14 to 16%. The cement plastered wall has become more damp than the lime plastered one. But the lime plastered one has also become very damp from rising damp only. In the non-breathable cement plastered wall, we have observed an additional moisture accumulation process, which occurs when more moisture is entering the wall than what can evaporate. Salt analysis showed that both walls are accumulating nitrates from the soil, but in addition to that, in the cement plastered wall, cement itself is introducing a lot of sulfates, thus accelerating the salt contamination of the masonry, which is a primary reason for building fabric decay. 
So we can conclude that lime plaster is significantly healthier to the building fabric than a cement plaster in old buildings as well as new ones. That's about it, about this comparison. If you like this video, please watch the other one as well, where we are comparing the lime plastered wall with an exposed brickwork. If you like more hardcore science, please watch our other videos, where we go deeper into the electronics of a damp masonry. That leg of our research contains new discoveries, which were awarded with the Best Research Paper Award on the 15th International Research Conference by the World Academy of Sciences. Thanks for watching.